Hey, my name is Nick Sievert, the founder of JingFX, and today I'm going to show you how to turn your simulations that you've made inside of Embergen into flipbooks that you can use within game engines like Unreal Engine 4 and Unity. So let's go ahead and get started. So now that we're inside of Embergen, you can see that I've got a small explosion preset here that we're going to be using uh, for this tutorial. And if you do want to follow along, the preset I'm using is 039 Game Explosion. Uh, and so I created this explosion a couple weeks ago for a project that I'm doing inside of Unreal Engine 4 And you can see that the simulation itself isn't anything crazy It's just a simple fireball that's meant to be viewed from the top We can render this out as a flipbook and then inside of Unreal Engine uh, What I did was I just scaled the sprite up quickly uh, to make it seem more explosive uh, Having a stable fireball that roughly stays the same size makes it easier to work with inside of a game engine uh, so with that covered, I'm going to go ahead and change my view from the ray tracer to our preview. And this right here is going to show us a preview of our sprite. Uh, I'm, I'm going to press spacebar to pause my simulation here. And I'm just going to kind of frame this up to where it doesn't really hit the bounds. And so we can press R and space to unpause. So R resets, space uh, unpauses the simulation. And we can see that we're not really touching any of the bounds over here. And we do have this one long piece that kind of comes out like that. Uh, and that could actually be a problem inside of our, our simulation uh, Just because if you had this on a flipbook and then you have say 10 sprites You'd see this arm as it sticks out a lot But I'm not going to change that in this particular simulation or for this this tutorial but That's just something to take note of um, So from here uh, we've got this this thing lined up inside of our preview uh, But one thing that I did is I made a mistake and I I didn't make the mistake on purpose But it'll, it's a learning lesson here uh, if we change from default to our camera, so the camera is what's used for actually capturing flipbooks. You can see that the camera here is not where you want it to be. And so if you uh, positioned your default camera to where you want your camera to be for capturing your flipbook, you can go into the, the camera node and click copy from current camera. And then that will uh, copy the camera settings that you had in default. And now your camera, which is actually used for exporting, is where your default camera was. <laughs> Sorry if that was a whole mouthful, but uh, the gist is is that you have to use your camera up here instead of the default camera for actually capturing flipbooks. Otherwise, it's not going to capture the right angle. Um, and so from here, we've got our camera set up. And one thing I do want to know is that we have all these different channels that you can export. So, you know, if you're wanting to, uh, you know, uh, have your emissive channel uh, as a separate render, or you want to render, say, just your scattering or something like that, you can do that. We've got motion vectors that you can use for your, your simulations, you know, normal maps, derivative normals, all that stuff. Um, and so some really cool things that you can export. Uh, in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to export our render combined. We're going to export our uh, full emissive channel with both scattering and our uh, emissive channel. So the difference between render emissive, which if we go back here, uh, you can see that this emissive is just pure fire essentially. And then the darkness is what's no longer emissive. Uh, and then you have your scattering, which if we play this back again, we can kind of see some scattering in there. So we've got our emissive. We've got our scattering and then the emissive channel down here, which is a bit confusing. We might need to rename it to like emissive plus scattering uh, is your emissive plus scattering. And so this right here is the channel that we're going to want to export. Uh, we're also going to do our render combined, which is uh, our, our basic default lighting plus uh, some fire and things like that. Um, and since we're exporting the emissive uh, uh, channel right here separately, uh, one thing that you could do is you could do, say, just your render key. Or, or maybe you know render ambient or something like that to get your smoke kind of depends on what your setup is uh, inside of your game engine uh, But for here, we're gonna do render combined our emissive We're gonna do motion vectors and six-point lighting just to show you uh, a Really complex setup so that you can get the gist of how all of our channels and things like that work So here's a quick interjection after I'd already recorded the tutorial One thing that I missed is that if you wanted to change the preview sprite size right here You can go up here to the settings gear icon and then right here you have a preview sprite size that you can change. The one thing that I will warn you about is the bigger your sprite size is, the much slower it's going to be. So you can see that it's already starting to slow down uh, quite tremendously. So just be careful with that. But you can change your preview sprite settings here to whatever sizes you want. So to go ahead and start exporting these channels, uh, we want to click the capture node and we're going to go ahead and add in a render combined. Now you can see that uh, some pins showed up. And so what these pins say is they're saying, okay, 
Here's your render combine and it's split into RGBA. So if you wanted to swizzle your channels or something like that, uh, you can do that. And of course I, I just drug off by left mouse clicking and going to the correct pin. Uh, and then uh, if you highlight hi highlight it purple by just hovering your cursor over it and hold alt and click, that will delete the, the pins for you. Um, and so we can just go ahead and drag this over. Um, and then what we'll do is we can add in the other stuff that we want. And so we'll add a couple. Uh, and so we'll say we want to have our emissive. We want to do our motion vector. And then uh, we also wanted our six point lighting. Now you can see that we have all of our six point lighting too. And so the, the capture node is, is getting pretty big now, but that's okay. Uh, one other thing I'll mention while we're still in the preview mode is we have some controls here uh, for your export. So if you want to do a little bit of post-processing or cleanup on, on the things that you're doing, you can do that. So for instance, we have an emissive multiplier. And so say inside of our emissive channel, you can change, you know, the multiplication values on that. So you could say 500 or, you know, 1500. If you really want to blow out the emission uh, on this particular export, you can do that right from within Ambergen. You can also turn tone mapping on or off. You probably want to keep it on in most cases. Um, and then for say our motion vectors, uh, you can change like the blur radius. So if you're getting some uh, like stepping artifacts or things like that, you can try and blur the motion vector to prevent steps. Um, and then we also have like six point lighting. And so we do want to change the six point lighting things. Uh, and so we want to increase our shadow intensity just on everything so that we get some better six point lighting here. And so you can see that now we've got uh, some better lights. And so uh, we also have like a, a density booster so that you can get uh, either softer lights or harder lights. And in this case, I think that maxing out is the best. That's kind of what I've got the best results from thus far in my master shader uh, for Unreal Engine 4 that I'm going to release uh, sometime in the near future. Um, and then all the exports from Embergen would just go in uh, and be plug and play. We're also going to have a, a shader for Unity for all of you uh, Unity peeps out there. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is that with our... Um, our six point lighting, sometimes you can get holes within the lights, which you can't particularly see it here. Um, but if, if you do, it's probably caused by the flames and you can check this box right here and it will bring the holes back <laughs> if you wanted the, this error, uh, cause it might be useful in some cases, uh, or you can leave it unchecked to, to get just perfect smoke. Um, so anyway, so that, that shows kind of, kind of what you can do within the capture node. Uh, you do have to have channels added for these other parameters to appear uh, so that you can edit them and, and uh, edit the previews. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, so what we can do now is we'll go ahead and head over to the export image node. And of course, uh, I created this by just dragging off of a pin and creating export image. And so uh, one helpful thing you can do is you can rename your node. So we'll say that this right here is our render. Uh, we're going to call this right here our emissive channel. And then we'll drag off here and we'll call this our, um, and I'm going to change this render combined so that it's faster because motion, uh, motion vectors or six point is really, really slow to calculate constantly in real time. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll change this to uh, motion and then we'll call this right here um, 6.1, 6.1. And we're going to call this down here uh, 6.2. All right, so now we've got <laughs> a, a number of things uh, uh, set up here. And so what we can do now is we're going to go ahead and edit our render node here. Um, and I actually, I, I did have a issue here. Uh, and I'll show you what the issue is in a second. And that's that currently, uh, if you change uh, your first frame and your last frames and things like that, uh, within the uh, the export node here, it's not going to change that in all the other nodes, unfortunately. Uh, we do want a, a thing where you can select all the nodes. So if you're watching this tutorial in the future, this might work, where you can select all the nodes and then edit all the things at once. And so we can try it, but I don't think it works yet. And so we're going to have our, our frame start at about frame four, and we're going to go to frame 120, because uh, I do believe that's the, the good part of the simulation. And yeah, so it fades out right about 120. Uh, based on some stuff that I did previously. Um, and so here inside of our render, you can see that it certainly didn't update. And uh, it looks like the, the last one on six point updated. So what we can do real quick is we can just go through and change this to four and 120. And so let's see, 
uh, four and 120, four and 120. And uh, we'll go here again for oh, four and 120. <laughs> so, so now all of our stuff is there and I'm gonna go ahead and finish hooking up these pins. Uh, and for instance, we don't need the alpha channel. Uh, so we can just go ahead and remove that. Uh, and then for motion vectors, we also don't need the alpha channel. So can, we can remove that from the component down here too. Uh, it helps us clean up our graph just a little bit. Um, and then for our six point lighting, we will continue to hook those nodes up too. And then finally here. And so in the future, this, this export process is gonna be a lot simpler, uh, but right now you gotta hook everything up manually. And we would hope that you'd be able to save out um, like uh, presets for all of your, your export types and things like that. Maybe we'll have the file name in this node so that you can just append uh, certain things to the end of it. Uh, Cause now you're gonna see the other tedious part of this. Um, and that's gonna be that we have to name each file and so we're gonna go ahead into our render here and uh, I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it tutorial. And then uh, we're gonna say this is FXT explosion. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then uh, actually I'll copy this. And then I'll say uh, render. And then right here, you can save your, your file as a, a, you know, whatever kind of file extension you want. So if you wanna select a separate file extension, so we have PNG, TGA and uh, EXRs. And so you select that export type from your save as dialog, not from within the capture node or anything. And for now, we're just gonna save it as a PNG. And then uh, we'll go to our emissive, go to the tutorial folder, we'll say emissive. We'll do our, our motion vectors here. And so we'll say uh, motion. And then we'll go to our six point lights and we'll paste that again and say six one. And then we've got our, our six point lighting two. So six, two. Okay. And so now that we've, we've got our, our, our capture nodes set up, we've got all the stuff that we want. We got all the channels that we wanted to preview and we can check the flip book again to make sure that it's centered how we want. We can see that it is hitting the edge here cause I did end up moving the camera and that looks good now to me. Uh, so what we can do now is we just go ahead and click Q export. So one thing to note is that if you wanted to say export just two nodes, you can hit Q export here. Q export here, or you could uh, highlight it on both. Uh, so we can say stop export, we'll do Q export. And uh, what we can do is from here, uh, we can hit export now, and then only these two nodes are gonna export. And so then if I click on the render node, and then I go to export, we can see what just exported here. And uh, it's pretty cool, cause you can click and inspect a particular frame, and you can use your scroll wheel uh, to animate forwards and backwards to preview how that animation is going to look. And since the frames are 256 by 256, once this is blown up, it looks uh, pretty bad instead of our viewer. But if you're in Unreal and stuff like that, and it's on particles, it, it genuinely doesn't look that bad. Um, and so you can also press P uh, to play your flipbook back and forth. We don't have any like controls on, you know, speeds or anything like that, uh, but be on the lookout for that stuff. We'll probably have controls uh, somewhere down here or something like that uh, to help you control playback speeds and things. Uh, and then if you press P again, it'll pause it. And uh, I believe you can use your arrow keys. So left and right arrow keys to step forwards and step backwards. Um, and so that's pretty useful. We can also do the same thing for the uh, emissive channel. We can preview that. And if, if we go to motion, you can, you, you'll can remember that we didn't generate our, our motion vectors yet. Uh, and so what we can do is we can select these remaining nodes. We can hit Q export and we can go ahead and do export now. So I had to stop the tutorial for a second due to a, a quick bug that I ran into. But however, we're, we're back into the tutorial and where we left off was I was doing motion vectors and exporting the six points here. Uh, and so you can see that the stuff that I exported had a bug because the camera moved, uh, but we can go ahead and select all those and click export now and that's gonna fix that bug. You can see that it zoomed in too. Uh, and so if you wanted to preview uh, the exports for your, um, uh, your stuff live. So say if we went over here and we wanted to export now, you can preview that uh, and click out of it so that it's not zoomed in anymore. And then if we go to our six points, uh, our motion vectors, all that stuff, we can see that everything is good to go. And so uh, the last thing that you need to do is you just go ahead and click here and we need to save each flipbook one by one. And so we can just go through and click save flipbook. 
Hopefully in the future we'll have a faster way to do this. I don't think that selecting nodes, I will save all of those flipbooks. Uh, and so now if we go over here into our tutorial folder, uh, right here you can see here are our flipbooks that you can now use in your game. Uh, one quick thing I'll mention is that if you accidentally move your camera, right? So if you're having a problem where your camera is moving, you can go into lock mode. Uh, so over here inside your camera and click lock both and that will prevent you from moving your camera. Uh, and that is about it. And so actually I am, I'm lying about it, uh, preventing it from locking. It should do that. I think it's just a bug that we need to fix. Uh, and so it does appear that you can't move the camera side to side, but you can still scroll in and out, which could be a problem. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll get that fixed too. But either way, in the future, I uh, use lock both to change um, how you do it. And so we'll, we could probably just have a lock all button. So it locks uh, both the zoom and side to side movement and all that stuff. But at least in this case, you, it's not possible to move it side to side because um, you might still want to zoom out to pan your flipbook so that you can uh, keep everything in frame and, and one singular size. But either way, that's neither here nor there. Uh, that shows you how to generate flipbooks for your games. Uh, and from here, any engine will just be able to load in these flipbooks and you can put them on particle, particle sprites and have some fun. Like I said, we'll have a master shader that we will release for Unreal Engine 4 and Unity uh, probably within the next month or so i don't know we got a lot of work to do on them to make sure that they're production ready and stuff but uh we're getting there so either way uh thanks for checking out the tutorial that's how you export flipbooks have a great day